football fan TV, welcome back to our final word show. It's another week has passed in the League of Ireland and we're back again. Myself, Paul and Kieran, and we're all ready to go. So we'll get straight into it, lads, once again. Dundalk and Rovers, obviously you two were there. Uh, cracking game, but it looks things and really opens up the league. I mean, maybe I'll come to yourself, Paul, first of all. Um, lots of goals in the game, lots of action, but more importantly, this is massive for the League of Ireland. This really opens it up. Yeah, I mean, from a Rovers point of view, obviously... We did the final word and they were playing Bows the next day. They lost. Um, the ref kind of ruined the game for me, if I'm being honest. And, um, you know, Sean Grover, obviously, with the two, suspense, two, two suspensions, they were um, they were kind of always fighting an uphill battle, in my opinion, at the at the back. And, you know, they had James for a long. He made his um, debut at 16. It looked, you know, very comfortable. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I actually didn't even know he made his debut till afterwards, and uh, Dundalk fan actually said it in uh, an interview with Kieran after the game. I actually didn't even realise mm. that's how good he played. Like I didn't even realise that it was, it was him. I knew Trevor Clark was out, but I didn't actually realise that it was Furlong. So that, that's a serious compliment for him. Yeah, it sounds like he's played like he's been doing it all his life. So yeah, I mean, fantastic. well, to come in on your debut against the champions, the best team in the league, you probably say, and you know, if you're going by last year, like they would be anyway yeah. um, and then you had uh, Ronald Fane playing right back as well so they were playing with a makeshift back four then they had the usual suspects and you know Green um, Jack Byrne and that uh, up there so from their point of view it was it was like I, I was kind of eager to see how they were going to approach the game um, I think we said it as well before the game Kira. Um but yeah I mean what did, what did you think of anyway from a Rovers kind of standpoint, obviously yeah. with, the, with the derby loss yeah. and that. I thought they like it's, t- t- see the last time I saw them was against um, Finn Harps when won three 0 yeah. So and, and that was a time when uh, a lot of people were that we were interviewing were very very negative about the way Rovers are playing. But you see that they've made a lot of changes and what they played and why they've won. Some you actually made a, good, a point about their formation and that. Will you kind of just explain that to people who may not, you know? From, Coaching analysis. Yeah, type. well, a lot of times when they had the ball, um, the two, the two, uh, Forms. wide men kind of like I suppose uh, attacking wing wingers backs. almost. Yeah. yeah, um, not wing backs. Did the higher, the higher, the was, higher it was, wingers. Uh, Ethan Boyle were, and, and Trevor Clark at the time. Yeah, but they were very high and wide when they would have the ball, and uh, Green would be in the middle, and he'd kind of almost be isolated because there was so so much space between him and the midfielders, the wide men. And what I noticed was now is number one is when they're playing it out from the back, they're trying to transfer the ball as quickly as possibly can forward, especially in transition when they're counter attack and things like that. They're trying to exploit space that they've created rather than tip tap left to right and the space is full. And the two wide men are starting to tuck in there. So two more women are coming in to the green, especially when green's dropping off. It's almost creating like three in the middle, overcrowding right. in the middle, or. If Dre- if Green drops in to receive it, um, he's almost like attacking midfielder, and then the two boys are, are two strikers, and okay. and then that gives lots of space then for the for the wing backs then to come into, so I think that's that's one thing that they've started to ch- uh, change a little bit, um, they had a few good chances at the start of the game, didn't they? And then, um, not probably the best chances, but they did have some, some half chances. Yeah. And then Dundalk. Yeah, the f- the fair or the better yeah. chances. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the dogs started to create a little bit of momentum then. They started to get a chance to chance. And I noticed then that, um, obviously, it, uh, Bradley had coached them how to game management, how to break the momentum for the dogs. So they were doing a lot of time wasting in terms of balls going out. Right, they are sure. trying to break any form of momentum. Hanging on to the ball. Yeah, hanging on to the ball for, for throw-ins. And just lots of little different things, and uh, uh, Nicholas, that, that just... Once the dog got a chance and they were looking to get it up quick and get another chance, they just kind of broke it up. But um, then obviously the the goal came from a set piece, like so. Yeah. Well, it was close to half time, wasn't it? Thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. I think they would have been. I think they would have been happy with obviously with a draw at the end of the game. So that really killed them then because they were playing away and they had to kind of come out in the yeah. second half, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, talk, let's talk about the goal. It was a record-breaking goal. Yeah. You know, Pat Hoban's seventy goal becomes Dundalk's all-time leading goal scorer. Yeah. Um. As I said to him when I was speaking to him after the game, uh, you know, it was a typical, his style of, of, of goal. And, you know, he's been getting a lot of uh, criticism regarding his, you know, his uh, goals from open play. I mean, does it really matter if you're scoring? I, I, no. I don't think so. I don't think he cares. Yeah, he? yeah. So. so, I mean, for me, like, it showed 
how much balls he had when he stepped to take the penalty yeah. against Bowes in like the last second of the game, and uh, he scored that, didn't he? So I mean, he's he's le- he's leading the way there, and you know he's done that record now in I think half the games or whatever. That I think it was nineteen forty three that uh, Kieran said um, to you after the game. Nineteen forty three, yeah, yeah. That was that was how long that record has stood. So um, mm. I mean, you look. You, you, a lot of credit has to go to him. I mean, he's been away. He was at Mansfield, Oxford, among other clubs, and and came back and still managed to to, to break that record. You know, and I think it was very much overlooked last season. And I thought at that point he was deserved of a call, of a call up. I mean, twenty nine goals at the end of the season, but at the time when we were asking and you know coming out and saying <coughs> that he should have been called up. There was a time when Ireland were in desperate need of a strike and they didn't have a lot of players. There was no sign of David McGoldrick or any of these players at the time, James Collins and so on. And even Vinnie Perth came out the other day and just said that people have done less to, uh, and deserve the call. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it is starting to be seen and, you know, uh, for the first time in a long time, and even Pat said it himself, like the media actually wanted him, him after the game, you know. So I think, you know, you've got to give, give credit where credit's due and, we don't really, you know, give players all that much credit unless they're doing something right. And you know, true, yeah. you know, if Shamrock Rovers had a Pat Huben, they'd I'd say they'd be fifteen points clear in the league right now. Yeah, absolutely, I, yeah. That's what I, I genuinely believe. Did Not it, that it, uh, and let's give credit to Shamrock Rovers too, in yeah. a sense, because they have a plan with a makeshift back four and look quite comfortable in the first half. And you know, then we come into the second half then, and Dundalk were really, Dundalk will look like they were back to their best from probably half time till about. 68th minute, 65th mm. minute, probably. Probably when Huben came off, and you can see how angry he was even coming off. Yeah, close to 70, around 70, yeah, 70 minutes. Yeah, well, 70. Duffy obviously scored in the 61st minute, but they were getting lots of joy on the right hand side yeah. between Gannon, Dan O'Kelly. They were constantly overlapping each other mm. and they were constantly just just wreaking, ha- like wreaking havoc there, mm. to be honest. Um, and then, yeah. Rovers made well. Duffy obviously gets the goal, and yeah, Duffy yeah. as well kind of gets overlooked because a he set up Huben's goal with the yeah, corner, yeah. and b he scores with a lovely finish. I mean, if you watch, if you watch it back, it would look it was a very difficult because he had to use it to defend it as almost a shield, mm. and then he buried yeah. it into the corner. Hence why the goal he didn't die for it. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. it was right in the corner. Like yeah, yeah, like he probably, couldn't see. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought the goal. Uh, despite the two goals, I thought the goalkeeper for Rovers actually. Had a really he actually good game. made a brilliant save just just after the yeah. second goal, and that's what kept. Um, yeah. Chris Shields actually mentioned it as well. Yeah. That's what actually kept them in it. Yeah. And then you know, I know we you got a lot the, of enjoyment. We were in the, the dark stand, remember, for, for that second goal, and just just erupted like, so four thousand people in or something. It was the noise of the place when they scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was very really really important goal. Really, really important goal for the whole season, really. Yeah, but and then you know, speaking about eruptions or something, we had the Rovers fans in front of us, and there was a goal <laughs> went in that was disallowed. And you can elaborate on that here because I know you enjoyed that. Yeah, I, thought, I, I think Paul just missed it, like, uh, but you saw the goal, you saw the goal, but then obviously the the Rovers. Yeah, fans it was a Jack Byrne yeah. shot, and then a rebound went to the yeah, yeah, the keeper, and and, and I can't remember who's Lopez who, or something put it. In. Someone put it in the follow up, and. Uh, Obviously, the Rovers fans in front of us. So obviously, there's the away stand, and then there's a little tiny pocket at the bottom of the stand in the corner where the away fans can sit, and that's where they were. And they would get up and, and uh, celebrate, it. and they uh, all getting up, and then obviously flag was up. So then obviously the Dolph fans are telling them to get in, like get that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And uh, one fella in the crowd, he must have been uh, he easily like in the sixties, like turned around and you know gave the. Uh, Signed, as, signed as, all, as the, all the Dundalk fans, like, but it was just the fact he was an elder fella, like, and uh, I, cu- I couldn't stop laughing. I was telling Paul, I was like, Did you see that? Like, he, he couldn't have cared less, like, for, uh, and then literally two minutes I later. I couldn't have then, cared less. No, your, your man oh, yeah, couldn't yeah, have cared yeah, less. Yeah. He's sitting, he's sitting yeah. in the And there was security and all around. But then a couple of minutes later, Vojic gets in and makes no mistake. And, you know, I was surprised because I remember there was early on in the season, I can't remember if you were with me at Rovers and he got a chance. Or was it you? I think it might have been the Finn Harps game. He came on late and he won, instead of like he took a shot, but it was so horrendous that somehow the defender handballed it and it was a penalty. Mm. Uh, <laughs> there it, you the, go. He was just yeah. I mean the the description says it all. Yeah. But I didn't think he was um, any use. But I thought he'd done well when he came on, and I thought you know the last definitely fifteen minutes mm. uh, you know was all over. Mm. And again, that's that's. I thought it was the last twenty minutes. I I was saying to be because people might say oh. Huben well, I wasn't off. was I wasn't count, really count. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Like like Huben coming off, it might change the game. But uh, one thing I have to say I, I like about Bradley is um, it's always used to send a good managers. 
uh, he's not afraid to make changes straight away to impact the game so he'll just throw in two subs at the same time with a, whatever it is three subs mm. just to impact the game and the left winger wasn't having a good game you, for Rovers straight away made the subs changed the game yeah, for the last 20 minutes Carol, yeah yeah and uh, I thought but they said at the 70 minute they were getting so many chances I thought they were going to score before the end of the game and then obviously Hooven came off but it was what was it it was the 80 85th minute around that um, it was later on anyway I don't yeah know it was a bit I don't know the exact minute, minute around that yeah but no they they looked uh, very dangerous like the whole last 20 minutes didn't they yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like they did yeah. And, and, and that's what I was saying as well I know we were saying about uh, Gannon and, and uh, Kelly getting a lot of joy in the second half but that again, that goes down to you know a lot of what's the word um, I'm looking for. But he like Furlong. To be fair to him, really got back into the game after that. I showed a lot of character, yeah, in my opinion, but, uh, to weather the storm and then get back into the game. So fair play to him as well. As, I mean, for 16 years old, I mean fair play to him. And you know, I think I do think that if Lee Grace is in that sense. Uh, that centre back position, I, I do think mm. Rovers are a better side. Yeah, obviously, probably. Joey O'Brien would have went right back, and you know, as Kieran mentioned before about the wing backs getting high, yeah. they obviously can't do that with Joey O'Brien because they've got the legs. Mm. But when Ethan Boyle comes back, it'll be interesting to kind of see what way Bradley kind of goes from there. But I still don't think, um, from a ro- like I know Dundalk have a ro- uh, game in hand, and if they win that, they go a point in the difference, but it's still all to play for. Mm. Dundalk are only starting to get a lot of their players back, McElhenney, Shields, and so on, who were obviously like two of their best players. Uh, they're only starting to get them back, and now you know, Rovers have had suspensions, they'll get those players back as well. You know, yeah. Trevor Clark, to be fair, it's been like a new signing for Rovers since he came back in because he obviously missed a huge chunk of last season, yeah. and um, you know, he's very, very highly rated there you know before he got injured he was to, to be moving to England so yeah. get him back in you know I, mean, I think we'll have the qualifiers for the Champions League yeah That's but we always have, have yeah. Europe as well but we'll be interested it, see I think a lot of it will come down to who's who's Ben's uh, best in in um, the summer transfer yeah. window it also depends on whether they can or always can hold, keep a hold of Jack Bourne if you, I know he was he was quiet there the other night but um he showed glimpses of, of uh, he had one shot in particular that you know stung mm-hmm. the hands of Gary Ryder. Um so as I say, if he can keep up his form, it'd be interesting to kind of see how how he goes. I thought Aaron McIniff uh, has been brilliant as well this season, you know, and, and Huber obviously goes top of the scoring charts on seven goals. But uh, let's just check out uh, the interviews with uh, Pat Huben and Chris Shields here now, so you can check them out. Hello, Malcolm Doris, Football Fan TV. We're here after uh, Dundalk, after beating Tremont Rovers 2-1. We're here with the record breaker, all-time leading goal scorer. How does it feel? I remember I uh, came up here last year, um, it was just before the break, and we were talking about you, you know, actually, will you, will you get to that stage? And here we are now, um, not even at that stage, at this part of the season, and you're after breaking. How are you feeling? And obviously, your thoughts on the game tonight? Um, you, know, it's, you know, it's an absolute honour to break a record um, at such a big club like Dundalk. Um, you know, uh, Vinny was saying in the in the change room there that there's been unbelievable players that's played for the club throughout the years. and. To break the record in in only three and a half years, you know, it's a very proud moment um, for me and my family as well. And um, you know, it's dream come true stuff. You know, my first game here was my first goal here for Dundalk was six years ago, and uh, against the old enemy Cork. <laughs> against Cork, yeah, and um, to go on and beat a record six years from now is, is you know, it's it's fantastic. And, um, and it's even more impressive the fact that you've actually been away and came back. And it's six years yeah. to the day today. Like. Yeah, I, do, I don't know the stats. I was told I've done it in, um, under half the games as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased. And, um, you know, you can't do that without great squad, great players around you who are creating your chances. And, um, you know, it's you know just over the moon, to be honest with you. Absolutely. And uh, you took your goal very well. Uh, in, in our case, as fans, a very classic goal by you. Um, but just so, like overall, in terms of your performance tonight, uh, how did you think you did? I thought you done quite well holding up the ball and some yeah, the players into play. Yeah, I thought you know I've probably played better in other games, but I thought I've done very well tonight. Um, I led the line quite well, and um, you know um, again I was up the pitch. I felt and um, you know I thought we were, everyone was excellent tonight, especially after the first twenty minutes. I thought we fully deserved. Um, Toy fully deserved the win, to be honest with you. It could have been a lot more, it could have been three or four, maybe five. Um, we were unlucky to concede as well. And, uh, Sorry. But, uh, you know, we're fully worthy of the three points. And, 
you know, we, we have to move on very quick now because we have a massive game against Waterford on Monday. Absolutely, and you know, all the talk of uh, you know, uh, Shamrock Rovers kind of running away with it now. They were missing players tonight, you've been missing players and stuff like that. Now the t- title race is well and truly on. Yeah, um, and we knew that was a massive game tonight. We knew we had to go and get three points against them tonight, and uh, you know, it, it squeezes the gap now to four points, but we have a game in hand, and um, you know, it's like I said, it's a, lo- it's, it's a long season ahead as well. Um, there'll be a lot of chopping and changes as well. So, um, you know, I'm just happy that we're we're back in it because, you know, after we lost to Sligo, it was a bit doom and gloom there, but we all rallied together and and we and we just responded very well. And that's down to the backroom staff. You know, I thought Vinny and um, Vinny's been excellent um, and John Gill and, and Higgy and just the whole backroom staff. And we just got it going at the right time and... You can see it on the pitch tonight. Yeah, you seem to thrive on these Friday Monday games. The games coming quicker. It seems to get yourself personally back into better form. Do you think that? I I fully agree on that. Yeah, I, um, as much as I don't like it towards the end because it starts getting, you, it's like you feel like you're playing at eighty percent. But you know, for the first week or two, I feel myself getting sharper. I feel myself getting fitter, and um, you know, I can f- feel that in my body, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm moving a lot better, especially in the last three weeks. So you know. I actually don't mind the busy schedule, even though everyone's giving out about it, but it's where you can pick up points quick and fast, and you can see that now there's only four points in between us and Shank Rovers. Absolutely. Well, good luck on Thanks Monday, so and I'm absolutely Thanks delighted pleasure. for you. Well done. Thanks Congratulations. Shields. Um, first game after you signed your new contract, how delighted are you to sign that contract? You've been here since 2012, it seems to be a real fan's favourite. Um, they seem to think that you're improving year on year. So how how are you feeling after that? Uh, yeah, good. Uh, it was something that was in the pipeline. It was just it was hard with the schedule, you know, game after game. We decided it was the right time to get it done during the week, and happy to get it done. You know, and they think I'm gonna improve year on year. Win the Ballon d'Or with them, sixty or something maybe. <laughs> but now it's a look at Sam. He's in 2012, and I don't, no way to go anywhere else. Love being here, and they love having me here. So it's uh, it's a well well matched. Yeah, it seems to be a real nice place. To, um, the, the crowd, when, they, when they're behind the team, it seems to be a really good place to, to play your football. Like tonight, I, f- I felt like the crowd really got behind the team. When, they, when there was times where you just kind of weren't at your best and then you just would kind of come into it. But how do you think the first half went from, from uh, your own point of view? Uh, I thought after the first maybe 10, 15 minutes, you know, it was a bit helter skelter. You know, Rovers had some good possession, you know, players picking positions and they caught us on the attack but I felt after that I thought we kind of took control of the game and it was uh, kind of a bit of an animal then towards the end of the fourth time we were just waiting on that fourth goal to come and thankfully it did from Pat's header you know it takes him to I think it's all time league score 70 right? yeah yeah so for, it's brilliant for him and I thought we were very very threatening down the right side with uh, the two greyhounds Dickie and uh, Gano so it was a good first half and it was just important to build on it. Yeah, was that something you just targeted? I know they had uh, suspensions and whatever, but Colin Finn seemed to play right, right full. It's not his natural position. Is that something maybe he's targeted? No, sure. When the team came in, to be fair, we didn't know what shape they were going to set up. So it was just as the game developed, these things happen sometimes. You know, it can happen against us the other time as well. When something's working for you, you just keep trying it. Yeah, I thought in the second half he was really dominant, especially the start of the second half. He was really terrorising down the right wing, and Sean Gann was making some fantastic runs and ended up sending up Michael Duffy. But um, at that point, did you think you were cruising? I thought we were well in control. You know, like I said, it was a good, uh, good goal, good team goal, good team build up play for Michael's goal, and then Alan Mans pulled up great save. Should have been three up, you know. And oh, yeah, brilliant. Then uh, that's how it goes. We seem to be in very good control of the game you know and then all of a sudden a little sucker punch to keep us on our toes for the last few minutes which is disappointing and a nine from Ayrton because it would have been nice for the, uh, the clean sheet with a back four on Gary but I think we've done enough we had enough steel to see it through in the end anyway yeah you know you've had a lot of injuries up until recent and up until now sorry. Um, and you seem to be kind of it looks like you are getting really hit in form getting back to yourself I mean some of the football that was played just before they scored by yourselves was absolutely unbelievable yeah it's going cool, I was hard when you get that many injuries and you're playing makeshift midfields and stuff like that you're asking Sean Hart to play the sit midfield and he's an out and out and half so you'll only ever get away with that for so long and I think maybe we had people coming in at the right time after suffering two defeats in a row hurt a little but we bounced back and that's four wins on the trot now and likes of myself and Fats getting back and Robbie Benson and Stephen Fowle and aren't that far away and then try and get Sean Murray back fit as well so we players still to come back and improve the squad it's good to from my own point of view it's good to be back playing it's good to see Patrick back playing as well yeah, it's good to see you back out there I just want to wish you best of luck on Monday yeah, and well done tonight fast. thanks very well much interesting words from the two lads there great to see Pat Huben so happy about breaking the 
goal scoring record obviously at Dundalk Chris Shields as well seemed to be quite content with uh, another great result contract, con- contract extension as well exactly right. um, you know it didn't seem like he was in any doubt of wanting to go anywhere you know he's, he's loved up there the two of them are loved up there and you can see how much the club means to them as well yeah. I mean they talk so fondly about the club so you know, fair play to them and they're great ambassadors for, for the league as well I know Kieran, you have one more point you want to go on about Rovers there? no I was just saying that um, I think I think it, the problem for them is that takes the glyphs off you know the run that they've had and everything is um, you know they play those three games back to back they they play Bowes and then they play Dundalk and then Pats they played all them three in a row at the start of the season and obviously now because they're replicating the fixtures just different grounds so it's tough for them, like you know, and the games are pushed into a week period where they're playing three games in seven days, like so, um, and they're very, very competitive games, you know, and especially if you're losing, getting people sent off, like in the games or getting people injured, uh, like remember against Bowes at the start of the season, the, the, the injury Aaron as, well. as well. So um, I think that that's probably what what struggles them. I think if they are going to win a league, uh, like for instance, if they go on to play Finn Harps and the likes uh, and the other teams in the league, and they go on a win streak. They have to start getting results in the bigger games now. You know what I mean? That's really going to decide whether they're going to win it or not. Because you can, you, weak folk, can, all of us can see them winning now, seven in a row maybe against the other teams in the league. But when it comes to the top two, top three now, they have to really start getting results. Like, Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Another team who are kind of making waves now are yeah. Derry. And, you know, obviously... Uh, Cork uh, ain't doing too well sitting third bottom but uh, let's talk about the, the game anyway Owen Tall with the goal in 20 sec- 22nd minute Conor McCormick gets sent off in the second half then for a second yellow a stupid penalty to give away in my opinion and uh, I know Derry missed the penalty but they make up for it then in the last minute and getting a the goal then with um, Jamie McDonough so yeah. Again, we we were sitting here last. I know they drew two two with uh, Waterford during the week, which you know you can kind of you don't really know what way to take Waterford. I know you've seen them uh, on on Friday night. We'll, we'll speak yeah. about that, but you know I don't think <coughs> Waterford aren't a, a, a walkover. Like you know, what I mean a lot of, a lot of people are thinking, yeah. oh yeah, it should be beating Waterford just that. They were for UCD for some reason. There was a shock. Yeah, well, they got sent one off as well, yeah, true, as well yeah. didn't they? Um, which obviously didn't help, but. Uh, yeah, I mean Cork, what the thirteen points, third bottom, no sign of winning, you know. But as as I was kind of getting on, to, we spoke last week about how you know Terry might be able to kind of push on for a European spot, and they yeah. seem to be doing that. But yeah. I guarantee you, uh, in two three weeks time, we could be could be sitting here again, going, "What's going on with Terry?" It's just the way they just operate. It's just that one week they're brilliant, mm. one week you don't know what happened to them. Kind of yeah. like Waterford. God, they're kind of yeah, like that. They're yeah. kind of similar in that kind of mold, you know. Um, well, yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're if you're right, we'll play that back in a few weeks' time. Oh well, we'll yeah. See, but yeah. if I'm wrong, yeah. I'm sure Derry fans will hang me out to dry. But Probably, that's yeah. fine. That's totally fine. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'm man enough to accept that. But uh, yeah, you know, but I was just saying that you know we we weren't giving Derry a lot of credit, but at the same time we haven't seen a lot of them play. The only time I've seen them this season was against Shamrock Rovers, and they looked quite average that game. But as I said, uh, Declan Devoy, he, he seems to be. You know, he had a he had a whole new squad coming in there, you know, and Owen, I think Owen Stokes is a great player and they've got um Pat McLean came in there as well. He's a model now apparently, just by his Instagram. But uh you know, they brought in some, some some really good players there and they all seem to be gelling now. It's, it's obviously taken time for them to kinda of come in there, you know. Um I was very impressed as well by Cherry. Um when I saw the highlights he did make a good few stops as well, mm. uh, important saves as well. So I mean, again. Can I just say one thing on 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 Peter Cherry is I know his, his wife is, is oh, suffering yeah. at the moment, so um, there is a GoFundMe link going around if you if you are watching this and can afford to spare some money. Um, put it in the link in the yeah. We'll put the GoFundMe in, in the link in the bio, yeah. and uh, if you have any you know any money there that you, you don't mind donating, it'd be great if you could if you could help. Yeah, so if you can just uh, drop uh, or check the link out in the in the bio. Um, from a Cork point of view, what is going on? You tell me. Thirteen points, third bottom. Inside the interview, the manager after the game, like I felt, like I actually kind of I felt really bad for him. Like you know, he's looking for, he's constantly getting asked, what, why, do you know, why do you think you're struggling for for goals and different things, and he's constantly having to come up with these reasons why they're just not doing that well and it, it, it's just the way he's saying it is 
he's basically trying to say a nice way is like I don't have the players like and I don't but I think, terms, the, I think the real question forward, should be why is he still there because like, I know that's harsh and everything he had some great moments at Cork but like yeah. at this stage I'd be sort of saying you, you need to go because he's not I don't know if he's lost the dressing room or whatever but like that's I, not Cork City that's not Cork no. It, it shouldn't be they're better they're that. much better players Absolutely. than that and you know um, I know I know they had a, a a big window there and a few players went here and there and all that kind of thing the Delaney incident and whatnot Damien Delaney mm. but like at this stage well he's fallen out with players as well look yeah. Barry McNamee was the player who got fell for the penalty yeah, yeah. He's, probably the, he's probably the best player on the pitch from what I heard and yeah. he saw he got rid of him and he was play, playing him out of position constantly but this this is the thing I just I think he might Kieran Sadler lost. Kieran Sadler I, I met Kieran Sadler and you know, he basically one of the reasons why he left was Caulfield as well. So it's just it's that's, that's it's uh, well, that's just putting it lightly. I'm not going to I'm not going to get into it and say right. spread rumors, but yeah. you know, he doesn't mix well with players, and you know, he's sorry, he's sort of the Mourinho of Ireland. Yeah. It seems to be the sound things, and um, to be honest, I just <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> quote that. Um, Jesus. Stephen but, Kenny probably have something to say about that. Yeah. Anyway. Jesus Christ, I, I'm uh, sure he has won two two Champions Leagues anyway. Uh, was I was going to say sorry um, FAI Cups yeah 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 but um, no what I was going to say was like and the thing is with Cork like if things aren't going well there you know <laughs> and no disrespect for what I'm saying is you know Dundalk have invested very well in their money and that, that they've made from qualifying for the Europa League they're literally 40 minutes away from Dublin like a lot of these players are based from Dublin and if if they're going to match the money that you're getting yeah. whatever it is you're <coughs> going to stay close to home there has to be a real draw to go to Cork and Cork with a draw because they're always either challenged for the league winning for the league even when you draw or win the league Cork will challenge and the players are down there so, and you're moving so far away so or travelling really far so mm. it has to be a real draw to bring you down there and if, if if they're not winning games and if they're not bringing in enough money or qualifying for Europe, Europe or like you said a manager is you know putting a stale taste in players mouths then they're just going to up and leave really aren't they it's just the way the game is you know well, I mean they're actually dangerously close to relegation like we're not even joking yeah. they, they actually might it's three points off you like, see it's mm-hmm. so but they, they strange won't, they, they won't get relegated now, let's, let's be uh, let's be serious here it'd be like saying that Man United are going to get relegated type thing it's just not going to happen yeah. no matter yeah, like, the start yeah. you're going to have their, their players are too good I, pres- uh, I presume they'll turn around but I just I just wonder is the solution to replace the man at the top I suppose not You'd like to think it is. Uh, I mean, you know, we obviously interviewed uh, the Cork fan after the um, FAO Cup final and went yeah. quite viral. That the stuff he said, he even messaged me on, on Saturday morning saying, Can you put that video back out? Everything I said in that, and people who, who said it wasn't right, I just wanted to show them that everything he said in that video was right. You know, he had 18, uh, 18 months to sign a striker. That's. Uh, <laughs> you'll know the video <laughs> once I say that but uh, anyone nah. outside Dublin sounds like that to yourself to be fair I thought that was a decent Cork accent yeah. uh, let me know in the comments what you think well, obviously the Cork fans are quite you know frustrated or whatever so we actually have our man Alex uh, with a quick little video to tell us his thoughts on the situation down in Cork at the moment Hi lads, um, just talking about the game on Friday night, obviously Cork City going up to Derry, Derry um, at the Ryan McBride uh, brand new stadium, it was always going to be tough um, to go one down after a scrappy goal, I thought McNulty could have done better, uh, Owen Toll, fair, fair play, got the header in um, with and Mark McNulty redeeming himself uh, later with the penalty save for Jamie McDonough but then when Jamie McDonough uh, scored the great um, long range effort it kind of put the three points to bed for Derry um, the season overall has been disappointing for Cork City um, I mean no wins in seven two draws one point clear of the relegation playoff I mean it just hasn't been good enough for a team that last season finished runners up in the league and FAI Cup and the season prior winning the double um, a lot of people can talk about whether they want Caulfield to go or whether the football is not good but the club in general this season hasn't perfected anything you know I mean the recruitment wasn't poor I mean losing the likes of Karen Sadler and, and Jimmy Keohan these are good these were first team players and 
Jaren Sadler obviously playing very well for Doncaster over in League One and Jimmy Cohan signing with Rochdale who are also in the League One and bring it but first of all like bring we were struggling for a striker obviously bring in Liam Nash who looked very well at the start in pre-season when they went down to Clarny and then played well in the Munster Senior Cup but obviously was just missing that match sharpness and he didn't score much he didn't score in the league but scored in the Munster Senior Cup against Cove uh, and then for him just to be building up to that match fitness and he left you know I mean and also bringing in the likes of James Tilly, Maddie Gillum. James Tilly looks to be improving. Uh, I mean, the game last week against Sligo, he was my man of the match. Um, Matty Gillum, who's yet to get a run in. I mean, why why did we bring in these players if they're not even getting a game? You know, to bring in uh, players from England, especially in League One, it's probably not that cheap. And... Now we're using the likes of Dara Crowley who came up through our youth academy and that's great. It's great that we're using our youth academy but we shouldn't have brought in players if we knew we weren't going to use them. I mean, I think we have 27 in the panel and a lot of players aren't even getting a run in. I mean, Gary Boyle, we brought Gary Boyle in down from Sligo who just came back from a, a cruciate uh, injury and he's he's still yet to get into the team. He's had a couple of... Um, couple of first team appearances but other than that it hasn't been much um, Caulfield himself the football hasn't been great but the team is missing that spark you know that that person to, to that playmaker to send Graham Cummins through or to James Tilly through you know we're we're missing that Karen Sadler-esque player um, Caulfield himself a lot of people are asking for him to go. I mean, the booze around Turner's Cross last Monday after the nil-all draw at home to Sligo. Uh, I think if we were to sack him, it would be a bit early. It would be a bit uh, premature. I think we need to give him a couple of weeks. I mean, this is the guy who brought us all the success of past years. People might say it was Sean McGuire, but John Coffey brought Sean McGuire to the club. He brought us that double season. He brought us up to the likes of where Dundalk, Shamrock Rovers were playing. Um, I think we need to give him more time. Um, leave him get the team more confident and get that home form back. Anyways, that's all from me, lads. Back to you in the studio. Thanks very much for that, Alex. We get on to Bose yeah. and, uh, and Waterford then. Yeah, um, and shout out to Waterford FC TV for the highlights here that you can check out while we are talking. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, Waterford started the better team uh, against Bowes. I uh, thought they were really advancing. You'll see a lot on the highlight clips, El Buzetti getting down on the on the wings. And obviously, it's a very changed Bowes side from the victory on Tuesday, massively so. I mean, I was, I was sat a few rows behind Derek Pender, who I thought might have been actually very important to, to Bowes in that game. Because you'll see now with the highlights, the amount of times El Buzetti um, gets space down that left hand side and he's so fast and it's really really difficult to keep up with him because myself and Connor kept observing how easily it seemed the Waterford were finding their way in around the back and James Talbot who's obviously been fantastic this season keeps another clean sheet today he was just screaming at his defensive line it was almost like he was saying like lads come on wake up because Waterford in fairness at least in the first half I definitely thought were the better side and they had the better chances you'll notice at some stage James tips the ball over the bar it sort of looks like it's about to creep in but it is a good save in the end. Akinade had a few chances as well. Bit of a target man up front for Waterford, it seemed. Going into the second half, it's it's more of the same from, from Waterford towards the start of it. I think Dinny might come on around the 60th, maybe 62nd minute. And when Dinny comes on, it's a difference for Bowes because, again, they have someone to aim for, a target man up front. I don't really think that Regba got a lot of chances um, against Waterford. And any chance he did get, he didn't really seem to take, uh, unfortunately. So when Diddy comes on, it's it's a different story. It's either, I think it's either his first or his second touch. It's a shot on goal, and it's it's a good save and tip behind for a corner. And when Diddy comes on, as I've said, it's it's a difference for Bowes. It just seemed to be able to gel more naturally. They had someone to aim for. You'll see Keith Ward, who I managed to talk with and catch up with after the game. Had a few chances from set pieces and whatnot, but um, Diddy was, was the main man towards the end of the game. And if anyone's going to score, it looked like it would be Diddy. 
but uh, there was no score in the end and it finishes nil nil. Disappointing for the Bose fans maybe, but then when they hear the result up in Oriel Park there seems to be a few more smiles on the faces. They obviously realise what that means. Not just with Rovers losing of course, but the fact that Bose are very much in the title race and this is turning into a three horse race now at this stage, which is really excellent to see at this stage of the season so but yeah, um, they weren't exactly gloomy faces at full time and on either part. Obviously, Waterford went up and got a great result. It's a difficult place to go to both this season. Um, and as much as Waterford didn't score any goals, they didn't concede well, what, any either. What was so. the general vibe amongst the fans after the result? I think overall they were content. Obviously, it was a bit like a, a hangover honeymoon period um, with obviously the victory mm. midweek. So I think the fans, did, yeah. they were like, we don't really care. Dundalk have just won against Rovers anyway. They're on the same amount of points. So it's it's happy days. Um where the fans are concerned and that, that's what I got from the fans as well after the game the interview seemed to be look we're, we're doing fine um, it was noticeable that without Dinny Bowles didn't have that posture up front and I don't know if Ali Rigba is just ready just yet to be the man who can step up well he's going to be back to Leicester um, so we're, um, yeah, we're just, what, we're yeah but I didn't I just personally I haven't really seen from him playing um that sort of I can be the next the leader Diddy for, for Bose you know I think maybe come summer that might be something Bose might look at because if Dinny's you know injured or suspended or well they'll like need to lines, anyway because he's going to be gone Reg will be back absolutely. at Leicester so, on 23 uh, so I think that, I think they could do with a replacement um, on the off chance Dinny is injured or suspended or whatnot because I don't know if they have a player of his calibre and someone they can you know aim for up front without him playing and it was kind of obvious was, when Dini wasn't playing were Waterford uh, playing for, for were, they, were they sitting and playing for a draw were they, were they quite compact or no, I, was no, it end no. to end or? it was definitely I think Waterford went attacking and wanted to, to get a goal right. it was clear that Waterford wanted to win it and at no stage of the game did either side sit back and go defensive it was end to end it's just that there wasn't like an abundance of chances um yeah, on either side. Like I thought, I thought for the highlights that they put up, that they posted, there was quite a lot for for an LR game. Like yeah, it, you know? I mean yeah, it was it was um not quite action Although, packed, yeah. but like it was end to end. Like mm-hmm. the, the players here at one stage and then it's up with Elvis Eddie Dutter and then here comes mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, Keith Ward with the chance for the free kick and all that kind of thing. So you know it was it was a good game. It wasn't was it, exactly like a massively boring nil nil. But who was it? Whether they win, draw, or lose, was that, there's always going to be uh, there's always going to be a highlight of um. Keep were taking a free kick and <laughs> either be, yeah, going yeah. close so well know, he wasn't yeah. far off at one stage I yeah. think half of the fans one ground one particular uh, stand thought it was going in right. for a brief moment and then the ball sailed over the bar so it was disappointing yeah, just, in, just in regards to Waterford obviously they've lost their uh, UEFA licence uh, and they can't yeah. compete in, in Europe which is kind of heartbreaking for their fans mm. um, and the club financially well, as well well it's the FAO's fault really isn't it um, seems to be you know uh, John Delaney and that saying that they sold it out for him or whatever and mm. they haven't done anything and, and he left the club kind of in limbo now so it'd be kind of interesting to see what way they go because they, they would have had you know probably guarantees to players that they were playing in Europe and stuff like that it, just do hope. you know what it sort of looked to me like Waterford playing like whatever let's just keep going we're doing well this season um, let's just keep yeah. pushing on and well they say they're doing well they have done well at times and then you know at other times it's like a bit like that's not the Waterford of last season so much but I think Against Bowes, it didn't look like that was on their minds. So they were just like, right, let's just get that out of the way. We have a match to play. And, you know, they played very, very well. I think if anyone... Yeah, but it would be on the club and the fans is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. do with I mean, the players on the pitch. They're there to play football. That's what they do anyway. Yeah, but I just would have yeah. thought as well, the players thinking, oh, we have a chance to qualify for Europe here. Um, well, I know, I know for a fact that there would have been players there guaranteed. Like, why would JJ Looney left, you know, Bowes for Waterford? Or yeah. any other reason other than that? I say That's just I, one player yeah, and maybe maybe the players have been told that they, that they've been given guarantees that they will be compensated regardless whether they are gonna where they were going to be allowed in or not like you know what I mean and I think I think now I think it's more so down to the league battle with Waterford to get compensation off the FBI like yeah. to compensate but the, but the, the, but the fans um, well, it'd be interested to see if it was signed and uh, writing that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I, I hate when I hear things like verbal agreements like yeah. things like that it's just but the fans still yeah. make noise you know they brought the drums they in always whatever, do so. they're, they're a good you know they're a good fan base they, 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 they obviously went away for what they obviously went away for what came back and now you know um, it's like yeah, I, I, it's a bit frustrating, like because it, that's the way the league is. Like, like there's a lot of teams that when they form and they have a bit of money or 
some teams have a half life. You know what I mean? So Sporting Bengal who folded Dublin City folded Cork folded before and they're actually a new identity now, like mm. you know, and they eventually got back straight up into Europe. And um obviously Waterford, Waterford now, like it's happened loads of teams, like and it's just kinda like yep. you kinda have to be made guarantees because it happens so many teams in the league that if they do remarriage as someone else that, you know, if they have a good season they should be allowed. Mm. Um, well, I suppose their losses past this game we'll kind yeah, of on yeah. to them now uh, they, they beat UCD 2-0 goals from Kieran Kelly in the 59th minute and Michael Dren, Mikey Drennan um, mm. in the 85th and uh, yeah again Mikey Drennan goes second in the top scorers list behind Patrick Huber on 7 and over, <coughs> overtakes uh, Aaron McAniff Good result for for Pats. Um, I did, I didn't see much of the goals. We weren't given the highlights this week. Um, for whatever reason, they just weren't up. Um, so don't know too much about the game because obviously we haven't been able to see uh soccer republic. But from a, a Pats point of view, it's it, that's I think that's two on the bounce now. Yeah. And you know they need they they need to kind of get back amongst it. And there seems to be a bit of a feel good factor now. The fact that they're after getting the away for license. And their their club are, are buzzing. Obviously, we were there last week, and we were asking a few of them, and they were happy enough, you know, laughing and joking about it because they didn't know if it was serious or not. And then obviously it was made, you know. So it will be them in Europe, and now they're I think it's two hundred and forty grand better off, uh, just for you know even just inquiring about it, which I thought was smart on their end. <coughs> but uh, you know, and you can't really begrudge you know Pats as a club for going and inquiring. Like if it was your, if it was in your club's interest, you would definitely do it. And you know, money. Of that you know nature can can go a long way for clubs like Pats, you know. Well, yeah, considering um, when you win the league, you receive half of that. So I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't agree with people calling them like Saint Rats and all that crap. Like that's just a load. Yeah, but obviously, obviously, what fan, Waterford fans are going to be a bit bitter towards that, it. That's there is, and there is yeah. fans who who just aren't educated that will just bite at anything anyway, uh, until they are educated, and then you can kind of say, all right, well, this is why this happened and this is what happened and if they still don't get it well they'll probably just tick and just don't worry about that <laughs> but I, I, I do like St. Pat's I love going to Richwood Park it's always a great place to go great atmosphere and great, great bunch of fans as well St. Pat's Athletic and um, you know it's, it's great to see them uh, in winning form I just sort of feel like Richmond Park they seem to be very good at Richmond Park but then sometimes when they go away they'll get a result they've probably got a result down in Sligo but um you know, I just I just sort of fear. I think St. Pat's can be a bit like Derry in that at home they're okay, but then away they seem to struggle. Maybe we'll see a bit of that on on Monday night. Obviously tomorrow we're we'll off to see Pat's take on Rovers, which is a bit more local. Um, then so yeah, they, they were like that last year. I remember Pat beat Rovers comfortably at home, and then they went and played Rovers away. And they got beaten completely by Rovers. That's the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? So I do know what you're saying. It was like that last season, but I think maybe. Maybe now, after you know they're starting to pick up points and yeah. stuff like that, still was a, a newish team and they were kind of adapting to new things. And I remember think you picked up on when they played Dundalk, they switched to a back three. They had Madden and Bramo getting forwards as wing backs and stuff like that. And since they've got to change that formation, they've really kicked on. Yeah. Um, and Certainly the likes of Dren um, as well. Uh, Brendan Clark has been brilliant. Reese McCabe, Chris Forrester, they've, they've all had a very good season, uh, those players. Um, yeah, but I think well. as well that formation suits Forrest a bit more because and, and Drennan said it last week when we interviewed him that it allows Forrest to get forward and the cave and stuff like that. And Birmingham. And uh, um, what's what's his name? Connor Clifford. Yeah. And uh, can just sit and just yeah. oh, he minces everyone. He's, he, he's he's a great very player. Good, very um, good. You know, obviously has his ups and downs through injuries and stuff like that. But seems to really now. He established himself at Pats. I know he's at Dundalk. Didn't really work out. Limerick didn't really work out. Yeah. I know he was. Yeah. He was captain for the underage levels at, at Chelsea yeah. for a while. So it's great. Know. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's it's just it's just great way that they play in terms of like because uh, yeah, the two wing match like uh, Birmingham is just so mobile. Like he's just up and down and uh, when he's Good getting down and he's winning the ball back. The, the the teams that are playing especially when the dark playing forward to back they're pulling at the right. The, the right back out towards them and create an overlap but because they've got the three almost attacking midfielders almost when they have the ball Royce McCabe is it's almost like Manchester City you know like you're, you're, they're waltzing in behind that little space and behind Reece. the, the yeah, sorry Reese McCabe um, into behind the right back and the left back into those gaps and they just constantly create chances in there you know and then obviously Conor Clifford is, is almost sitting at the edge of the box then wants to cut back or cut across 
you know so I think they've definitely changed it like and they're more solid because of it and they're also exploring more support. yeah well it gives them the front too as well because they obviously have Shaw and Drennan and they seem to be they said they know each other's game so yeah. that seems to be working for them as well and Shaw hasn't scored that many yeah. um, you know Drennan makes up for it uh, but UCD um, you know another loss to sit in second bottom they're really looking like they're going to be playing for the in the playoffs, aren't they? Well, the big issue here is that Ferrugia and Scales have been looked at by Man City as well. They're the two key players. I mean, if they lose them, they're most likely going to go oh, yeah. down unless they get a good fit <coughs> them. And yeah. God knows what type of contract they're on. Yeah. That they, you know, and that's the that's the biggest problem we face is that yeah. players go for 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 buttons, you know, and they might just go over there do nothing, and, and but it takes away from UCD actually staying up because. I know from talking people that they were a big part of what, how they play now and a big part of how they came up. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, 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 the two of them are playing for the early other 21s as well. They're big players. And, you know, if you, if you ever look at any of their Instagrams or anything like that, like big players are commenting on their thing on, like, what a player and stuff like that. So they, yeah. If they lose them, do you think uh, Finn Harps would be able to catch them? No, but I do think that they would struggle to stay. Well, I don't think Cork are any, yeah. any danger. I know they haven't been with you. I know they haven't a bit of a, I, a I bad still, patch yeah. but uh, I think that I still think they'd win their playoff though but just because of the level in, in Division 1 not saying that it's it's just that you know Finn Harps won, won the league last year uh, yeah but my quite point, comfortably didn't they and, and you know they're rock bottom no, I think my, 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 my point would be Sligo haven't been great either you know so I think that yeah, it's just been mean, them and Sligo for our yeah, but, but what I mean like if Finn Harps were the best of the league this year obviously the, the title is quite tight in the first division this year but I think anyone who's even second or third they're still not nowhere near have enough money as good squad players team players as the team that's in the second bottom in the league like you know hmm. I just don't think the quality's there like, I think Shells would be better I think Shells yeah yeah like to probably Shells in my mind uh, would be the st- have the best to stadium and the players that they have at the moment to probably yeah. win that type of game but, um, yeah but other than that um, yeah no, I don't know what you mean well no, well, no Cal- Calvo and Longford will have stuff to say about that as well yeah um, oh, okay yeah, and I, I know we mentioned Sligo there. Uh, Sligo for Harps. I mean, it's kind of like a derby, though. Just, it? just, just, yeah, with the Raphael Quartaro derby. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder if they call it that. Well, I've seen him well, celebrate. It's a drive to them, isn't it? Really, yeah. like, you know. Oh, well, he signed. He signed from uh, Sligo to yeah. to uh, Finn Harps, and uh, I seen him celebrating the goal anyway. Uh, yeah. Sean Boyle's got or Sean Boyd. Uh, Daniel O'Reilly gets sent off for the second yellow in the 90 minute and Ronald Cochran scores um, the equaliser in the last minute which must have been heartbreaking for Finn Harps who still haven't won again and yeah, yeah I, and I know I said it in, in our notes that they've just, they're just been piss poor um, I just I, like you know we, we talked about it remember after the the Rovers game the Rovers game and we got and slated was, for and then we got slated like a uh, told him that I, I felt sorry for him because they're going to struggle to score goals. Do you know what I mean? I, just, I, I saw him at UCD as well, and um, um, I just they just don't really look good enough for this really league. Bad, uh, for yeah. um, they're out there decent at home. That's the weirdest thing. Yeah. they score goals at home. Well, it's a massive <laughs> trek up to to Bally Buffet, so I'm not just tired of players out even getting Small there. Small so, field, um, very windy up there, yeah. and. Uh, I think um, they played so well against Cork up there. They took the league twice. Yeah, um, Cork have been so bad. Yeah, true. Um, By their standards. Yeah, I just, I just see Finn Harps going down. Um, it's yeah, I wouldn't be surprised so if I got joined. But no, but it's just it's, like, it's just uh, the way I feel. I think they're just. I know, I know. I'm not I, actually think, I actually think they're gonna finish dead bottom. Sorry, Flint. Oh, they are. There's three points from yeah, 13 games. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, sorry. Um, 13, ga- 13 yeah. games and t- three points. It's just three draws. It's not. It's, 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 it's so tough. And it's, it's almost when they're playing away that they're just trying not to lose. Um, Again, I feel sorry too. I feel, do feel yeah, sorry. Yeah, I feel sorry. But that's, exactly, well, that's exactly yeah. what you were talking about after that final word. Uh, after the Rovers mm, game. That's my reaction, yeah. We, we said that, you know. At the end of the day, like um, any team that finishes first gets to the playoffs from the first division, if they don't have the, the right amount of money or backing of stadium behind them, like they're they're gonna struggle to get any form of results in the league. Like, but also you made a good point when you were talking about Cork is the fact that you're gonna attract players. Like, who's gonna want to go up there? And that's their yeah. local. I want to live up that type of way, you know. 
Um, I know they had P- yeah. Paddy McCartney help them get through um, through the playoffs last season. He was the, I think he was the player manager or whatever, but he helped them get through anyway. And uh, he's obviously gone on to Derry now. But anyway, uh, they just don't really seem to to be doing an awful lot. And Sligo was the same, to be honest. I mean, I was surprised that Sligo had been, you know, last minute getting a goal or whatever. They're yeah. just... You know, I'd be worried if I was a Sligo fan. But I don't think they're going to go down, but it'd be a big... like They're, they're just going to really struggle this season. They're just going to be having to settle t- to watch, you know, very, very average performances. That's maybe the one thing about Sligo, though, is that they do score goals, even if it is late on. Like, they don't exactly hmm. stop in matches. Yeah, you know, call against going. Pats last week, yeah. Yeah. But, but um, again, yeah. I mean, we saw Sligo play St. Pats, so I was just there. Oh, just wanted to, I kept checking the watch. Right. Wanted the game to end because it's just it's just so, like, boring nearly. Yeah. You know because it was just such a given that Pats were going to win. Good thing they're not to tell you that much. No, probably not because they'd be half asleep. But anyways, um, yeah. No, I just Sligo, Finn Harps. I don't have much to say about them because I've only seen both of them uh, the once uh, this season. But they're the games that I didn't really want to be there for mm. because again, there's nothing really about them that makes me go, yeah, I want to see these guys again. I like the way they play football. I like the way they score goals. I like the way they keep playing sheets because they don't do any of it. So it's unfortunate. Um, and I, I don't know if Sligo are going to go down. I pray, I'm fairly confident Finn Harris will. Unless they It'll be interesting to see the, the next kind of couple of weeks pan out. Uh, I, and we'll see kind of if UCD does lose those players, will they be, will they be hanging around the, um, the relegation spot or will they be, uh, you know, moving up the ladder or, or what because if they start gaining points and Sligo start getting pulled down that will be the the, the the real difference maker but they could just be blessed the fact that Man City are going to take Ferrugia and Scales and then Sligo might you know Maybe, might, be after, yeah. might be able to relax in that sense but uh, so, I mean just for, from their own point of view from the fans point of view I, mean, I thought they were better last season to be honest but I think we should probably wrap it up there in our Premier Division final word uh, huge thanks to everybody who watched um, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button we're nearly at five and a half thousand subscribers so if you wouldn't mind hit that subscribe button now uh, we'd really appreciate that and uh, yeah thanks for watching